swept up in today's independent music. Good morning, everyone, and in case it's not morning where you're at, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm your host, Anthony Longhair LeClaire, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, the marvelous Marla the Mouse McCarty. What's up, everybody? My glass. Mine, too. It's not glass. It's a mug. It's Spongebob. Well, that's... We're gonna have to blur that out. Um, <laughs> so, welcome everyone to Music Mysteries. Ooh. So, today's question, as uh, last week's question, is brought to you by Alex. You can call me Susan... Hartwig. <laughs> those of you who get that reference, good for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, those of you who don't, you haven't lived. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. haven't lived. That or you haven't watched enough Guy Ritchie movies. Either way. Um, it's okay. I'm in the same boat with you if you don't get the reference. You haven't seen... How are you shocked by this? I'm not, I guess. Okay. Well, anyway, today's question, today's <laughs> music mystery mm-hmm. is as follows. If you could go back in time to any concert. I guess he did say specifically any historic concert, which to me just means any concert back in time. But if you could go mm-hmm. to any one historic concert, which one would you go to? It's a good question. Because, like... The go-to, which are for a lot of people, would be Woodstock. Yeah. And so, here's the thing for me in Woodstock, though. <laughs> like, I love the concept of Woodstock. I think it's amazing, and it was a huge, amazing historical event. But would I personally want to be there? No. (laughs) I wouldn't. And, like, my main reasoning for that is mostly practical in the fact that, like, it pissed poor rain, like, most of the time people were there. There There's, like, half a million people there. You're on a field full of mud and garbage. Yeah, but then you're naked and mudsliding. Yeah, if that's a thing that you're into, which... Well, they were all free-loving and taking LSD and fucking everyone, like... I mean, sure, yeah. Like, I'm glad you don't want to go there, Mm -hmm. given that. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, it's personally not for me, I would say. That's fair. But I respect anybody who wants to go there or has been there. (laughs) What? You respect anybody who's been there? I don't like. I, I, don't, bet I, I some respect real the idea. There. No, I respect the idea of somebody wanting to be a Woodstock or Sony. Yeah, you know what I mean. You just broke my dad's heart, by the way, because I'm sure if he could go to any, well, that's not even true because he might go to Simon and Garfunkel's live at Central Park. But yeah, if because he's he's never seen them live. He had tickets mm-hmm. to see them and then they canceled the tour. But I think beyond maybe that concert, he would mm-hmm. go back in time to go to Woodstock because. He had a ride to go to Woodstock, and unfortunately, for whatever reason, no names, no whatever, the buddy of his, who was going to drive everyone to Woodstock, got into a fight with his father the night before, and kicked the shit out of his father and got arrested. So they didn't end up going to Woodstock. Now, I don't know a lot. I wasn't around then. Yeah. But, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, I feel like that's the wrong energy to take with you to Woodstock. He sure is. That being said, my dad did then sit, I think he was in Renfrew at this point, so he sat in the theater there, which he had to sneak into because he was underage, Mm. and he watched all of the live broadcast of Mm -hmm. Woodstock in the theater. And that's cool. That's That's super cool. cool. But also, he could have gone. Also, mm -hmm. his, his mom did say, my nanny did mention to him that if he went, she'd have a fucking heart attack. Mm. So I guess it's kind of good that... Well, I guess I can't really say it's good that Buddy kicked the shit out of his dad. But, like, I mean, Mm. I guess it's good he didn't go. Yeah. um, Because then I would have never known her. Mm. And that would have been sad. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm almost certain my dad's answer would be Woodstock if it wasn't the Simon and Garfunkel concert. But, anyway. Yeah. What's your answer? My answer would be... um, And, like, I've thought about this one a little bit. And, like, there are loads of concerts that I would love to go see. And, I mean, an obvious choice. Well, like, I have seen Fleetwood Mac. Twice. Twice. Um, But, like, seeing Fleetwood Mac back in the 70s would be really cool. But that's not my answer. My answer is I would like to be, like, front row at Live Aid in Wembley Stadium. Because... 
Do you know how many people oh. I would check off my bucket list from from being there? Like Ultravox. Yeah. So there was like <laughs> I, love know, it. I love it. You're <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know that band, but cool. <laughs> it was like there was Queen was there, David Bowie was there, Elton John played, Dire Straits, Phil like Collins. Phil Collins. But that being said, you would have seen Phil Collins in the States too, because he was the only one who played both concerts. And that's true. But So you wouldn't have seen it in uh Well I would if I could if States. I had the option to see it in both then yes, like if that was if I could if you could be two places at once if I could be two places at once then sure yeah I would ha- love to see Live Aid and both because I looked at the lineup and like holy shit and it, it's interesting because that's only like in terms of going back in time to see a historic concert you're only yeah. going back ten years from the date of your birth yeah I was gonna say it was not ten years yeah I was like yeah sure okay yeah because it was in the eighties but like it was in eighty five eighty five yeah so it's not as far back in time as some other concerts would be but like i just think that'd be amazing because you you would get to see so many fucking artists that i would love to see live some of which are dead now it would just be amazing Mm. and this was like right in the middle of the 80s so like a lot of these people were like right at the height of their fame i just think it'd be amazing and also you know everybody's raising money which is great like i don't know how much money they raised with live aid but it was a lot of fucking money because it was like not only the two concerts but people tuning in around the world and making donations too yeah. So, yeah, it was millions and millions of dollars. Cool historical event and just mm-hmm. an amazing concert to go see, I would think. So, yeah, that's that would be my answer. Cool. Yeah. Do you have an answer? So, here's the thing. So, I'm not, like, a crowd person, per se. Mm-hmm. So, already, like, picking a concert is kind of like, oh, no. Because I, I have to make sure that if I went back in time to go see a concert, that I could be with someone I knew. Mm-hmm. So, I just went in. Like, I could go by myself, but, like, I'd rather not, right? That's fair. Um, so, like, I would have to stipulate that someone could be my plus one at this concert, essentially. I'd be your plus one. That being said, one of the best concerts I've ever been to, I went to by myself and could very, very realistically just say that concert again. And that was at Massey Hall in Toronto, seeing Steve Vai, Ingve Malmsteen, uh, Zach Wilde, Nuno Betancourt, and Tosin Abasi. Mm. Just all ripping on guitar and singing and playing and soloing uh-huh. off each other and jamming and all that stuff. I could I could very easily just say that concert mm. again because first of all it was dirt cheap in that it was like a hundred bucks. Yeah, for all those artists, which, like yeah. yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> and there's not really a bad seat in Massey Hall. No. And it was great because then I got to watch Ingve Malmsteen brush his fucking hair backstage like a ponce. Before he came back out to get his guitar and finish the song. Mid-song. Mid-song he was playing. And then takes off his guitar, throws it at a techie Mm. who catches it. And goes back to make sure it's tuned or whatever he's doing. He goes back off while the drum track is still playing. They don't have a drummer on there. It's the drum track that's playing. And he's backstage brushing his fucking hair stage left. Like he's, you know, the biggest ponce in the world. And then comes back out and rocks the rest of the song. So I would love to have seen that concert from like front row center. Mm -hmm. As opposed to upstage yeah upstage right Mm -hmm. it would have been really interesting to see from a different perspective so that Mm -hmm. and it's hard because i've seen a lot of the musicians that i've wanted to see and if i could go back in time there are a lot of musicians i would want to see oh yeah like and you you did a good job by saying oh mm -hmm. well i'll go to this one where i can see 30 fucking musicians yeah or 30 different bands and slash musicians right Mm -hmm. in one go and that's i mean wise that was my logic i was like well what's the concert that you could go to where i could see the most amount of people that i would really definitely want to see and like one of those would be woodstock of course and then the other one mm. would be Live Aid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for similar reasons, I wouldn't go to Woodstock. But I'm also like, again, this is like my re- really my only poison. Um, delicious. Mm-hmm. But really my only poison. So like mm-hmm. going there, I think I would be in a different headspace than you every other person get there. get a contact high and being at Woodstock. Sure, but it wouldn't be the same as everyone else's headspace there. You know no. what I mean? Also, with a million people there, I might get a contact high, but that is going to dissipate. So, I mean, it's all open space That's and it was thing. raining. So like if I was in yeah. one section where like 50 people were smoking up, it might hang in the air and I might really get fucked up. But like, mm-hmm. I'm not dropping acid. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't take the brown acid for sure. No. But, uh, I, just because of how I am, I wouldn't get naked and go mudsliding. 
No, I wouldn't. Like, I and wouldn't like, either. I might fuck in a field, like if you came with me. Mm. But it would have to be in tall grass where no one is filming, because yeah. in the actual video footage of Woodstock, even if you just get like the two VHS box set mm-hmm. of Woodstock, never mind the DVD stuff of way more footage. Mm-hmm. If you just get that. It shows. Like, naked couples just, like, bedding down in the grass about Mm. to get it off. And I'm just like, no, I would not. Mm. There were so many cameras kicking around there. No fucking way. No, thank you. Um, And just trying to get close to the stage. Mm. Like, you'd have to go there so far in advance. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah. There there are so many reasons why I wouldn't go to Woodstock. Um, It'd be interesting... To be at the concert that the... St- if, if I was that interested to go to another Stones concert, because I've been to one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, like, it'd be interesting to go to the one where they had Hell's Angels hired as security. Yeah. If only to see all of the crazy shit that happened. However, if I went to that concert, I would be perhaps part of the crazy shit that happened, so I wouldn't want to be there. No. But I think, realistically, a concert that I'd never been to before, that, historically, that I would want to go to see, and it, no offense... But my plus one would be my dad. Mm-hmm. And the concert would be Simon and Garfunkel live at Central Park. I had a feeling that might be your answer. Yeah. For a number of reasons. One, mm-hmm. because as I mentioned in the last Music Mysteries episode, where one of my top five albums on a deserted island would be that very same concert. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, watching the DVD of that concert, there is a man who looks like my media arts teacher from high school who I've actually mm-hmm. been talking to recently. And my dad and I always pointed out mm-hmm. that he's like there in the audience. We're like, oh my God, that's... Mm-hmm. It's not because yeah. the concert took place well before he looked that way mm-hmm. and whatever. But watching Paul Simon get rushed on the stage yeah. with some dude who's like, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. Right? And mm-hmm. so, like the bouncers do like a very last minute job of getting him just before he reaches Paul Simon, which is super interesting. Mm-hmm. And seeing like... Seeing him carry on, but still see... I guess we wouldn't see it from the audience, but mm. watching it from the camera's perspective, mm. you get to see the glint in his eye of, like, what the fuck just happened? Mm-hmm. And he's kind of terrified. Like, you can see in his eyes yeah. that he's, like, ah... Uh, Visibly shaken. Yeah. So that's really interesting to me. And it'd be yeah. cool to be there in that moment and be like, oh my god, what was that guy about? Like, what was this whole thing? And it was, like, a song that I think he hadn't played previously and like just was debuting there or it was like Mm. fairly new anyway and he was playing there i don't know if it's called johnny ace or the late great johnny ace yeah 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 okay i think yeah you're right so that's the song he was playing when Mm. the guy rushed him and he rushed him just as he was talking about um john f kennedy getting shot Mm -hmm. and he's like and i heard john kennedy died and then the guy rushes him and he's like oh yeah you know and this whole moment happens so It'd be really interesting to experience that. And also just sitting surrounded by trees in like this gigantic fuck off city that I probably don't really ever want to be in, but just surrounded by trees and Mm -hmm. water and people who are all just grooving to just chill music that everyone can have a good time to, whatever. Yeah. That is more my concert experience. And yeah, it was massive. Like there are fuck tons of people there. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'd be like, ah, but if my dad and I were sitting there, we would watch the whole thing like really up close if we could that'd be awesome and then we would just sing every song Mm -hmm. and i think that's what i would do yeah Uh, that would be the one history sorry this is a very long-winded answer Mm -hmm. that would be if i go back in time to one historic concert it would be simon and garfunkel's Mm -hmm. live at central park yeah and yours would be live 885 yeah and it's cool because i actually at wembley yeah (laughs) because i looked up so i looked up the lineup here and let me just read this out for you so the Wembley Stadium one you have Adam Ant Boomtown Rats David Bowie mm-hmm. Phil Collins Elvis Costello Dire Straits Brian Ferry Elton John Howard Jones Nick Kershaw Allison Moye Queen Sade Spando Ballet Status Quo Style Council Sting U2 Ultravox Paul Young Wham and The Who yeah so by the way yeah. I have the full DVD box set that has both the American and the British concerts and you haven't told me this yet why i'm pretty sure i mentioned it before when we were in deep river talking to mike and cc okay but the reason why i mentioned it while we were there is because mike and cc still have my dvd box set of live 885 and we need to watch it together mm. so we need to get that back from you i also need to give mike a case of beer for fixing my very first guitar ever that i owned when i was 11 because mm-hmm. uh, he has that in my very first amp at his place so at some point hopefully we can make that exchange that would be wonderful yeah um yeah how Howard Jones does a great tune. Um, I don't know if it's called Hope You Find Me, 
but it's all about like the creation of the universe essentially. and he like does this mm. epic piano intro so in the actual video of it it's all flute and it's really synthy because it's 80s yeah but so it's like do 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 and it's all synthy shit mm. he does that on the piano and I was like oh, oh. It's so good. so good. It's so good. I've yeah. tried to do it a couple of times. I'm like, nope. I have no idea what the fuck. Yeah. And then Phil Collins plays Against All Odds. Uh-huh. And he fucks it up, which is very interesting. He hits like one note and he's like, fuck. <laughs> to be fair, he did play both the States and the UK, so yeah. whatever. Um, so the jet lag is probably real. <laughs> yeah. And Boomtown Rats do I Don't Like Mondays, which yeah. is awesome because... Mm-hmm. I dig Bob Geldof, and mm. uh, and I I love that song. That's a great song. And uh, shout out to Mark, yeah, uh, who plays uh, with us at the Fox when the Fox is mm. open. Uh, he comes out to open mics and sets up his keys, and mm. he plays all sorts of shit, including mm. "I Don't Like Mondays" by the Boomtown Tell me Rats. Why. <laughs> I don't like Mondays. Tell me why. I don't like. Well, we might get. <laughs> Sorry, I yeah. gotta stop before we yeah. sound too much like it and get a copyright uh, oh, no. claim. Yeah, but yeah, so. Let us know mm-hmm. what one historic concert you would go to if you could go back in time and go to any concert. You know, I almost said the Astonishing Tour by Dream Theater because that whole like three hour epic album is fucking awesome and the mm-hmm. story is amazing and it's all yeah. prog metal, which is super cool to me. So mm-hmm. I would love to see that because Dylan and I wanted to go to that, but it was too pricey for what we could afford to see it in toronto at the time mm, that's just fair. too bad but drop in the comments below let us know what historic concert you would go to if you had the choice and uh do let us know any music questions you have as long as it's related to music ask it and if we uh if we decide to use it on a on an episode we'll message you reach out and uh promote something that you're up to or a cause that you're you're fighting for or whatever else we will give you a feature, give you a shout out and promote something for you. So mm-hmm. uh, so do drop those questions in the comments as well and let us know your answer for today's. Yeah. And once again, shout out to Mr. Alex Hartwig for the wonderful question. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Alex, call me Susan Hartwig. <laughs> Salut. Cheers. And as always, we will see you guys later. Swept Media. Get swept up in today's independent music. That's on. I get certainly more satisfaction. I, I mean, the tea is pretty good, though. It's rooibos. But whiskey. It's. It's whiskey. Yeah, but rooibos tea is quite delicious. I didn't even put any honey in this, and I'm still really enjoying it. But whiskey. Yeah. I I see what you're saying, and I agree with you. Yeah. But I'm also stating my tea is also delicious. You would see what I'm saying. Weird synesthetic that you are. <laughs> Synesthete, I, mean, I guess. Mm-hmm. You got a real big honker, bud. <laughs>